why health insurance, man? Because yeah, 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 it's, it's a good niche and we know riches are in the niches and all that. But how did that start out to where you're like, health insurance it is? Yeah. So the, the captive agency that I started with was, was, it was health insurance exclusively. And, uh, and so I made a transition from that to a more independent broker role, uh, where, and, and it was October, right. Of 2017, right before open enrollment, mm. I didn't, and, and in the middle of the annual election period for Medicare. And I didn't have, I didn't have time to figure out Medicare and, and to go to selling Medicare. I had to default to what I knew. Yeah. And so I, I learned a few products very well and, uh, and, and kind of stuck with that. And rather than trying to, you know, fit a bunch of square pegs and round holes, I, I found the product. I knew who that product was designed around, right? Like I knew that this particular carrier, this particular product was designed for healthy, self-employed people that, yeah. you know, were, were, were paying way too much in the marketplace. And so I just, took a kind of a hyper focus and uh and it got me back to like a baseline income to where I could then start to uh transition into some of those niches or those other sectors of the industry like Medicare, mm -hmm. you know, life insurance, group benefits, that kind of stuff. But I really believe uh that to get started in the insurance industry, you have to be you have to be focused on 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 one or two products, one one sector of the industry. So if you're going to sell Medicare, you know, learn Medicare. If you're going to sell health insurance, learn health insurance, and then kind of go from there. Because yeah. ultimately, whether it's health insurance or Medicare, you're going to build a good little chunk of residual income that y you'll have the time and, and and availability to learn some other things. So uh, for me, it might be engineering. It might mm -hmm. be it might be Medicare. Right? Yeah, it might yeah, be group yeah. benefits. We'll make an most engineer. likely insurance. What what's say say you have we have someone watching and they're brand new. They barely know how to spell health insurance. Okay. And if someone will is coachable and they'll listen and they'll put in the work and, and do what you say, how likely are they are to actually to, to actually make six figures selling health insurance? I, I think if, if they're all of those things, I mean, you started it off with could barely spell health insurance. So, you know, they do have to but have, they work hard. Who cares? <laughs> yeah. So, well, Hey, I mean, I, I was going to say they'd have to have an above average IQ, but I think I have an average IQ. So I think, uh, they would just have to have an average, <laughs> Me too. uh, IQ and, and ultimately that's the most important thing you said, be teachable, be coachable. Yeah. Um, I see people come from, you know, we, we see it a lot. We see agents bounce from from agency to agency, from from different, you know, from Medicare to health to final expense, back to Medicare, back to and, and they never actually focus. But yeah. realistically, I would say that somebody that is is focused and, and hardworking and coachable uh, could make six figures in their second year. And, and we're going to wow. see that this year with a lot of my agents that, you know, came on middle last year, still made sixty, seventy thousand $70,000 last year and, and are well on pace for six figures this year. So, yeah. you know, and, and none of these people came from an insurance background, you know, if, or even a business background. For that if, if I went and joined your team tomorrow, whew, we'd have to get a bigger office. That's true. Yeah. What, what, and I didn't bring anyone and I just focused on health insurance. How much money would I make? In, in, in your office, your system, everything else over the next 12 months? So my first year in health insurance, I made 110,000. So I believe that you could easily make 109,000, uh, but I was, definitely under That was a setup, by the way, because you said earlier that, <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah, 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 okay. I'm okay. remembering, yeah, no, I, I, got, I, I knew where you were going at, but I think you could, I mean, you, you could easily make six figures your first year. Um, it's not uncommon. Well, I did it, cold door knock, cold door knock, <laughs> and sell on life insurance. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and I think that there's there's a, a bigger market for health insurance, which is always why I've, I've kind of wondered why it's a smaller niche or why it's an underserved niche. I mean, there's a lot more people out there in the under 65 space that are, you know, uh, then they're on Medi th 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 then are 65 plus. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're confused. I mean, frankly, like the, the people that are self-employed or the, the worst situation you see is like they left a job where they had great benefits because they wanted to take this business venture on their own yeah. or, or get into real estate or whatever the case is. And, and they're like, yeah, so I had a thousand dollar deductible on my group plan. I was paying 50 bucks a month. You know, what, what can you do? And, and we're like, there's a learning curve there. We got to, we got to walk them through, Hey, listen, the, the under 65 world is not perfect for the self-employed, mm. but we're, I always say if you have 10 options and, and all 10 options are 
you know, just okay, we've got to choose one of those 10 options still. Otherwise, we're going without coverage. And so we're going to always choose the best option that 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 sucks the least, right? Because like at the that. end of the day, it's, it's insurance, you know, even yeah, if you're talking, yeah. you know, and I'm I'm very much a positive person. I think you've you've picked up on that. Dude, but, no doubt. But uh, but but when you're when you're talking about insurance, I think you, you've got to understand you're talking about insurance and nobody uh, nobody's super pumped about buying an insurance policy, whether it's like the best plan in the world or not. You know, they hope to not have to use it. They hope to not have to pay too much for it. And they hope that it covers everything every time they use it. Yes. And uh, and and that's just not insurance. You know, that's not homeowners insurance. It's not your car insurance. And, and that's certainly not health insurance. So yeah. I think coming from a realistic uh, point of view is absolutely what helps me uh, in this industry. So you made 110 grand your first year selling health insurance. I did. I, I made 110 grand my first year as a broker selling health insurance. I made wow. I made uh, I made about 80 grand my first year ever selling insurance with with a captive agency. So. Dude, that's freaking baller, though. Yeah. How many people can you do you know that can say that? Not many. And Not and and frankly, uh, it's it's something that I, I talk about often because yeah. I never I always thought that I would just do construction, manual labor. Like I, I didn't think that six figures was really in my in my wheelhouse and, and now we're talking about seven figures yeah dude right? come on you're gonna make so, seven, seven figures next few years let's yeah keep it next real. year next year boom next year, 2021 right? we're speaking into existence 2021 i don't know how i'm gonna do it but we're gonna do it right I, six more months to figure it out and then you know we'll, we'll go for we'll it figure but, it out um where were you going with that why why did you think six figures was never in the cards for you like is, is do you think that's an upbringing do you think that's a mindset do you think it's uh it's a scarce like i, I don't I, you know what i mean because yeah and and you know it's definitely it's an upbringing thing i mean it's it's uh you know i was raised uh with i mean everybody in my family is manual labor right it's just kind of yeah. uh and and not to say they're not doing very well i, I mean sure some people in my family are doing really well doing manual absolutely labor, but like, nothing wrong with that it was it was for me just i don't know man i guess i guess i didn't know my worth i guess i mm -hmm. guess i was uh you know i guess i was just a little a little overwhelmed with real life and uh and so you know it wasn't it wasn't insurance that made me feel like i could i could make six figures honestly it was it was uh you know it was just kind of overcoming some of that some of that those limiting beliefs we talk yes. about what, what were yours because we talked about that a lot lately and i've been i've been picking up on that what were your limiting beliefs one of my limiting beliefs was that i felt like i was going to do construction my whole life and and you know forty sixty thousand dollars a year was going to be it for me and and yeah. And I could be happy with that, you know, and, and certainly I could, but I, it, it was, I don't need to make more than that. Uh, who cares? Mm. Uh, what, what's the point? Right. I mean, I, I'm happy here. Right. I, I don't need money. I don't need, and I still feel that way. How did you flip the script on that though? Because now you at least have the in, in, inner drive to make that a reality, whether you really care if you make 2 million bucks or not, you still want it. It's going to, it's going to sound really bad. Um, but That's it's right. not, no, they won't tell it's, it's not, it's not a, like, I'm not, I'm not money motivated exclusively. Obviously, yeah. like most people, money is, is motivating. Um, but I, I feel as though money is kind of like a scoreboard. Dude, right? I was, and swear so, I was thinking scoreboard <laughs> over here. I swear. And so, so as soon as I turned it into a competition, um, you know, to, to go after more and more. Yes. And, and ultimately it's what we're talking about. It's breaking through that next limiting belief. I had a, I have yeah. a meeting with my team on Wednesday before we came up here. Um, you know, this isn't about more than breaking that six figure mark. This is about more than, than the, this is about breaking through that limiting belief so that we can see what's behind that curtain and what's the next limiting belief. Yes. Because I believe, I don't believe I've arrived. I mean, we're talking like I had limiting beliefs and I don't have limiting beliefs anymore, but I do. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I deal with it every day. So explain you know? what the, that is for those that don't know what a limiting belief is. So a limiting belief would be anything that, anything that is in your mind that is that, that is going against why you couldn't reach your goal, right? So like, yeah, you know, you back. so, so I, I can make six figures this year but I've got to do this, this, and that, or, or, or I've got to overcome this, this, and that. And, and so, I mean, we had a conversation earlier, uh, with, with one of my agents and it was, yeah. it was breaking down that goal and, and what you actually need to do to achieve it. And, and I think a lot of people they're they, they just don't, yeah, do yeah, that. yeah. They just don't break it down. How many people struggle with that, uh, that misconception we were talking about on the phone with your agent about how the, most agents feel like they need to know everything before they do anything. Yeah. 
and and I and I call that like getting ready to get ready, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's it's I'm like you're about to get started. Yeah, like I promise. I'm, well, I'm about to get started after I get this taken care of. Yeah. But like, and it's and that may be a limiting belief. Right? Oh, dude, it is. It's definitely it's it's kind of like that first call fear. Like you you don't know anything about insurance. I have yeah. found, and this is I mean this just came to fruition big time with with one of my newer agents in the office. I mean, we closed like six deals for him in a month. Like, I mean, he was killing it when he was passing the, the, the lead off, when he didn't know anything about the product, right? When he didn't know anything about insurance, really. He was just, yeah, he was just finding, he was just fact finding and finding the right client. And then he was passing that to, you know, a closer, we'll say. And, and we closed a lot of deals for him. And then as soon as he learned a little bit about, about the product, he started to, to divulge that and, and to come out with that right away. And it took us another month to, to get him back to selling again. And we kind of had to go back to some of the basics, but that ultimately, the more you know about the product, the more you're likely to get yourself in trouble by saying yeah. something silly. And, and I'm not recommending you go out there and sell it on your own with, while not knowing about the product. So don't misunderstand me. I'm saying if you have somebody and most agents do, right? Most if you do. have somebody that can help you close those sales, lean on them, lean on. If they're not willing to help you, then Somebody run. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if they're not willing to, to, to be there for you to help you close those first sales, run. He will. Run. This dude is a beast. Definitely follow him. Stay plugged in. Come to percent and meet him. All right. I'm speaking into existence. Yeah. He will be there. He's already got a ticket. Oh, yeah. He's ready. Come meet him. I'm going to keep finding amazing people like my buddy Brad to interview, to put on camera, and for you to learn from. If you've never subscribed, Come on now, take a second, do that. See you on the next one. Hey, if you love this interview, and I know you did, I got another one that I know you're gonna love too. It was how to write a billion dollars, a billy in a month. It's right there. Click on that video, I'll see you over there. Because what we're starting to find is that there are plenty of ways that you can open the door with Medicare supplements, right? Oh, yeah. Sure. You guys know this.